it happened. Jesus rose from the dead. He defeated sin and death forever. It happened. The stone was rolled away. Jesus walked out of the tomb and he lives forever. And now that Easter's over, it's our turn. We have been born again into a new life. We are dead to sin, but alive to God, no longer slaves to this world, but set free to pursue God's righteousness and embrace the gift of eternal life. We have been bought with a high price through Christ's redeeming blood. We have been made temples of God's spirit, free from condemnation and reconciled to the Father. Though we may struggle here on earth, we press forward to our eternal homeland, walking in faith and with confident hope that the one who began this good work will bring it to completion. Jesus rose and the gates of heaven opened, and that victory alone means that nothing can separate us from God's love. This is why we hope. This is why we worship. This is why we give. This is why we go, pray, baptize, teach, and preach. And we'll never have to do this alone, for Jesus will be with us always until the very end. Easter may be over, but for us, it's also just begun. I believe in God, the almighty ruler of everything, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only son, conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. I believe that Jesus was tortured and crucified. I believe that he died, was buried, and on the third day, he rose again. I believe that he ascended to heaven and dwells there with God. And I believe that one day he will return to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit and in the forgiveness of sins. I believe in the universal church, a fellowship of saints from yesterday, today, and all time to come. And I believe that all of those who call Jesus Lord will be resurrected at his return and will live forever with him. Before the dawn of creation, there was the Word. Before the beginning had begun, before the planet spun and the sun hung in the sky, there was the Word. He was the light, and the light was alive, giving life to all things, everything. No thing was created except through Him. And in His image, He created them, us in his likeness to reflect the light and be just like him but sin came on the scene and everything went dark not even a spark left we were hard pressed for a savior he had offered us his love in exchange for our trust but we could not live up to his standard of perfection we were dejected broken hostile hopeless but this is the gospel we put our hope in that God, in his endless wisdom, fashioned the word into flesh, and he pitched his tent in the midst of our mess, and the rest is history. The mystery of the cross, the incalculable cost of his life in exchange for our imperfection, the beauty of his resurrection, giving us life in exchange for his death when we call upon his name, Jesus giver of grace, purveyor of peace, master of mercy, the word, the one who bore the scars that we deserve. Have you heard the gospel, the good news, not what you can do for God, but what he has done for you. It is finished. God's plan 
since before the beginning, the greatest story ever written, broken by sin but restored when we surrender to the word. This is the gospel. Have you heard? Today, we begin with goodbye. Goodbye to shame. Goodbye to the way things used to be. Goodbye to regret and bitterness. Goodbye to apathy. Goodbye to business as usual. Goodbye to the lies that deceived us. Goodbye to whatever is holding us back. And hello to freedom in Jesus. Say hello to a second chance. Hello to a firm foundation. Say hello to mercy and new possibility. Hello to the gift of salvation. Say hello to a father who adores you. Hello to the son who redeemed us. Say hello to the Holy Spirit, our comforter, and the resurrection power within us. This is not hype or wishful thinking. This is not clever branding. This is where we find true, full forgiveness and peace beyond understanding. Welcome to a promise that never fails. Welcome to an everlasting hope. The creator of the universe is speaking. You belong here. Welcome home. Welcome to the life abundant. Welcome to your true worth. Welcome to the family of God. Welcome to church.
My way. 
and miss a melody. I'll raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me.
of the King, the name that is above every other name, all authority in heaven and on earth has been placed under his feet. Jesus, we honor you. Yeshua, we honor you. Name above every other name. King of kings, Lord of lords, the one in whom we place our trust. The one who is worthy of our worship. The one who is worthy of all honor, glory and praise. We fix our eyes on you. Not on our circumstances. Not on our problems. Not on what the economy says or the politicians say. We fix our eyes on our King. We are citizens of the kingdom and we worship our king. Your word is above it all. Your love is above it all. So we worship you from full confidence, from full trust. cast all our burdens upon you whatever burden you came in here with this morning I want you to know that your God is all powerful almighty nothing is impossible for him whatever miracle that you're believing for that in the natural seems impossible with God, all things are possible. And you are His beloved child, His beloved son, His beloved daughter. His face is towards you. His eyes are upon you. You have His pleasure. And it gives Him good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Right now, lift it up to God, right? Whatever it is you're believing for. Look to the King. Look to the one who is able. The one who is above it all. Jesus, the miracle worker.
a woman with an incurable disease touched the hem of his garment just the hem of his garment and she received a miracle what more you and I who are standing before him who have his attention his love his eyes are upon us speak to him Lord we thank you for your open heavens angels ascending and descending all around us we thank you for miracles that are being released healing, deliverance, breakthroughs. Even as we stand before you in this great exchange, we exchange our fear, our weaknesses. We place it at your feet this morning. And we fix our eyes on our King. King Jesus, King Jesus, King Jesus. King Jesus. Fresh touch from heaven, la <laughs> Sing. is above all names then why are you fearful why are you worried why are you afraid of the future worship him he is above it all come on continue to sing it to the Lord Believe those words that you're singing. Believe that there is power in the name of Jesus, that He truly is. The name that is above every other name. Above cancer, above bankruptcy, above everything that has been declared, above impossible. There is a name that is above it all. The name of Jesus.
worship you, we worship you. Hallelujah. What an awesome God we serve. Amen. He truly is the name above all names. Every time you speak out the name of Jesus, expect circumstances to bow down to the power of that name. Amen. Come on, please be seated. We're going to receive Holy Communion right now. I'm going to ask the stewards to pass the communion around. Hallelujah. Amen. What a powerful thing we can do together. Receive Holy Communion. Declare the victory of Jesus. Declare that we are now partakers of this new and everlasting covenant. The old covenant of the law that brought condemnation no longer has effect over our lives because of Jesus Christ. We are now partakers of this new covenant of the Holy Spirit, a covenant that was sealed in the blood of Jesus. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Everybody got your communions already? Even as it's going around? We know the significance of Holy Communion. We know what Jesus accomplished for us through the cross. We know the suffering that he went through. His body was broken. His blood was shed. We understand today why he had to go through all that he went through. Because of, if Jesus didn't go through all that he went through today, you and I would not have a hope or a future. We cannot come before God. We cannot stand before God. We can just at the best do our best and hope we make it to heaven which we know we will never make it because we all sin and we all fall short. No man can make it to heaven by their own effort. No man can be made right with God by their own effort. So Jesus Christ did it for us. That is the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. He did for us what you and I cannot do for ourselves. No other belief system offers such salvation by grace through faith. Aren't you glad to be a follower of Jesus this morning? Amen. The Bible says He made Him who knew no sin become sin. Imagine this, this perfect Son of God who had no sin at all, sinless, became sin, took the sins of the world upon Himself in that moment at that cross. He had to experience the shame and the pain the rejection from the Father, everything that sin brought, every curse of sin, He took it upon Himself. And in that great exchange, it says, He became sin so that you and I might become the righteousness of God. Listen, there's no other way we can come to God unless we are or we possess the righteousness of God. The righteousness that God accepts. And because today you and I are the righteousness of God, Jesus didn't just do that so that we will one day make it to heaven. But He did that so that you and I can be in a position where He could bless us. Because the Bible has many blessings, has many promises. But the problem is, these promises are only available to those who are righteous. But for Jesus Christ, we can, cannot hope of getting any blessing from God. But God made him who knew no sin to become sin so that you and I might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And because you and I are the righteousness of God this morning, I want to declare some of the blessings that are yours through Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible says the righteous will be delivered from trouble. Today I want you to know that is the blessed assurance that you can have whatever trouble that you may be facing right now or you may be going through or going to face. I want you to know that you will be delivered from trouble because that is the promise of God for the righteous and you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. The Bible says no harm will befall the righteous. Nothing the enemy do will succeed against you because you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. 
The Bible says in Psalms chapter 37 verse 25, I have been young and now I am old. That's the scripture. I'm not describing my, myself right now. Yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or oh, his descendants begging bread. I want you to know that you will never be forsaken by God and your descendants will never be in a position where they will have to beg for bread because they will be the blessed of the Lord. Amen. The Bible says in Psalm 5 verse 12, For it is you who blesses the righteous man, O Lord. You surround him with favour as a shield. The righteousness of God surrounds you. Favour surrounds you like a shield. Is that good news? Shout an Amen. Come on. The Bible says he does not withdraw his eyes from the righteous. His eyes are constantly upon you. That is good news, guys. God is watching over your life. Blessings are on the head of the righteous and the memory of the righteous are blessed. So those of you who are saying, I'm forgetful, I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting things, my memory is going. No, your memory is blessed because you are the righteousness of God is in Christ Jesus. And he says the blessings of the Lord are on the head of the righteous. Amen. The Bible says in 1 Peter 3, 12, For the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and His ears are open to their prayer. Every time you pray today, because of what Jesus Christ did at that cross, the moment you pray, God's eyes are upon you, and His ears are hearing your prayers. So your prayers will be answered. Amen. Psalm 34, verse 17, The righteous cry, The Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The root of the righteous will not be moved. Amen. Nothing will be able to move you. The righteous will never be shaken. The righteous will flourish like a green leaf. The wicked are overthrown and are no more. But the house of the righteous will stand. Come on, that's good news. The wicked flee when no one is pursuing. But the righteous are as bold as a lion. I want you to know that you are bold as a lion. You have the spirit of boldness that is on the inside of you. Amen. Simply because of what Jesus Christ did. And that is the moment that we are remembering today as we take communion. These blessings are yours through this new covenant. Today as you and I partake of Holy Communion, we declare His death, His suffering through the broken bread how his body was broken the cup representing his blood how his blood was shed for us so that you and I can lay hold of all that God has for us so that you and I could be made righteous and so that you and I have our heirs not just blessings for this life but one day we will stand before our God in eternity and praise him in his presence along with all the saints come on say thank you jesus as you lift the cup and the bread in your hands in your own words take a minute or two and just thank jesus for what he did what he's done for you for his great love for you for never leaving you nor forsaking you he's got a plan for your life you have a hope and a future Father, we thank you. We thank you for the broken body, the shed blood. Even as we partake of communion today, Lord. Even as we partake of this bread, we partake of this cup. Lord, we are partaking of you, Lord. The fullness of all that you have accomplished for us. Through your finished work at the cross. We thank you that healing is ours. Deliverance is ours. Blessings are ours, O Lord. We receive it right now. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's partake of the cup. The bread and the cup. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, you sing it. All praise.
Jesus. Amen. Let's give a clap offering to Jesus. You know, we're going to receive holy, uh, collect the offering right now, even as we worship just now. Let us uh, worship with our giving. Last stewards to get ready. If you want to, there are different methods through which you can give in cash. If you want to, the cards that are on your seat, you have the QR codes there, touch and go. Uh, the bank QR codes, feel free to give. Father, we just thank you, Lord, that even as we have worshipped you in song, Lord, now we worship you in giving, O oh Lord, giving of what we consider valuable to us, O oh Lord. We thank you for this opportunity. Thank you that every good thing in our life is from you, O oh Lord. Every blessing has come from you. So, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to give. And, Lord, I thank you. You bless every cheerful giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, the small buckets are for your communion cups. The, big buck, uh, the, the bag is for the offering. So, we're going to have the announcements played even as the buckets are going around. Let's go ahead. Good morning Destiny C3 fam. It's your friendly neighborhood giant Robin here. Thank you all for joining us today. Wasn't the worship just awesome? I really could feel the tangible presence of God. So lovely to see all your smiles here. Man, it's just an awesome presence over here right now. For those of you joining us online, thank you so much for joining us. We are, it is a great pleasure to host you guys. Alright, without further ado, the announcements. First up, in conjunction with our Join a Ministry campaign, we have a video for you guys. Please keep your eyes pasted to the screen. Enjoy. Describe the team you're in without telling me what team you are in. I'm the team that... Wait, uh, you have to wait for me to finish first lah. Yo, go, 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 go. Describe what ministry you're in without telling what ministry you're in. So, what I do is, I deal with younger humans, making sure that they get in line and uh, on track. Thank you. Describe the team you're in without telling me what team you're in. Uh, well, without me, the pastors won't know what Bible verse they're looking at. Describe the team you're in without telling me what ministry you're in. I'm the team that people ask to tone and drama when they're loud. Quick, describe the team you're in without telling me what ministry you're in. I say hi to people when they pass by. Describe the team you're in without telling me what team you're in. I make people do weird things and speak in weird languages on stage. Describe to me the team you're in without telling me the team that you're in. I'm always the grab driver after a connect session with the youth. Describe to me the team you're in without telling me what team you're in. I'm the eyes and the ears for the camera guys. Wasn't that an awesome video? Alright, just to encourage you guys, right? Just a small testimony that I like to share personally. Um, many centuries ago, I used to be part of the youth uh, leadership team and while being a leader, while serving, God was working through me, in me and on me. And that, that was how God drew me closer to Him because I had to be accountable and all that. So, I would really, honestly, seriously encourage every single one of you if you're really you want to grow with God you want to grow with the church family you want to grow with the church community please do sign up and join a ministry and if you're really sincerely in, interested you can look for Nicole or see your respective connect, uh, connect group leaders and they will assist you to get in touch alright see you guys serving Secondly, we are going to be running our Alpha Marriage course. This is for people who are newly married or even 10 years married. Doesn't matter. I'm sure every single marriage has its unique issues that we need to work on together. So anyway, 
Without further ado, we have a video for you guys. Please enjoy. Censored, like, because it's only for married people. Eh? The married people will know how to read lips. Oh, is that right? Okay. Oh, Jesus did that, huh? Terrible. You wanted to beat him up. Then what happened? Oh, okay. Yeah. And then the cost healed your marriage. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Gen Z, that's true. Yeah. So don't miss it, guys. It's really, really good. If you feel like beating up your spouse, this is just the cause for you. See you there Tuesdays via Zoom. Come on. See, I told you, married people can read lips. Okay, it's okay. Let's move on. We'll see you next week. Jesu having being stressed behind there. Wow, what an awesome video. For those of you, again, who are newly married, one year, six months, doesn't matter, or 10 years, 15 years, or even five years, I would like to encourage every single one of you to join, join up. And if you're interested, you can look for Gen Z or Jesu. And on a serious note, I would like to just encourage everyone because um, marriage sometimes has its up, has, has its down, and we always need that input. We always need that help from people who have gone through these experiences, right? Especially we need to learn how to collaborate with the one that God has chosen for us, all right? Because it will bring us, bring us to a greater level of faith. So I would lo really love to encourage every single one of you to join this Alpha Marriage course. It will definitely spread the love and bring your love to the next level. All right, see you guys there. Furthermore, ladies, today is the day, Awaken Gathering! Woohoo! I'm excited on your behalf because it's going to be a fun time, it's going to be an enjoyable time, there's going to be a lot of cakes, cookies, pastries, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm feeling so sweet right now. So, for you guys, today is the day, 1pm after church, be there on, I won't see you, but on behalf of Pastor Debbie, see you guys there! Lastly, prayer hour is happening every Thursday, 8.30pm. Sunday intercessory prayer is back on every Sunday, 9.30am. And Youth Connect is happening 1pm at the ground floor. Be there. Do follow us on our socials, especially our Spotify and YouTube because you can stay updated with us. And again, a friendly, friendly reminder for all those parents, take your children after the service. Take, take it, take them and go. Don't forget, please. All right, enjoy the rest of the service. I'm your favorite neighborhood giant, Robin here. Have a good Sunday service. Hey, you enough, Robin. Amen. I just want to uh, take this opportunity to remind you it's going to be a great time today. All the ladies are staying back. So we're going to evacuate the place after service, right? Just leave here like there's a fire happening or something. No, so food is going to be served on the first floor. Not here on the first floor. So you guys can go have your food, your, your mingling on the first floor while they set up the place for the women's gathering. So we ask for your cooperation after that. So how many of you are here for the first time? Can I see your hands? We want to welcome you to church. Welcome. Want to give you a little uh, welcome back. Pastor Robert, welcome to church. Wow, good to see you here. Anyone here for the first time not receive a welcome pack yet? Just right there, the lady right at the back there next to... Ta is that Tamara? Yeah, hey, hi Tamara. Sir. Anyone else here for the first time? Welcome to church family for all the way from Pakistan. So they had uh, uh, an Urdu, uh, sorry, a missions conference. Our Urdu church hosted a missions conference and their delegates come in from uh, different parts of the world, mostly from Pakistan. And some of them are with, uh, with us here today. So if you see them around, give them a warm welcome. We are so blessed to have, uh, of course, Pastor Hanuk and uh, his wife Nida and auntie as well here. Welcome. 
And of course, the whole bunch of pastors here. I'm, I'm not going to name all of you one by one, but welcome. Uh, right now, we're going to have Pastor Zubin. How many of you remember Pastor Zubin from... Uh, so you got people who remember you, Pastor. So they're going to come up and set up while you go around and greet one another and welcome them to church. Someone who came in at 7.15, your car park ticket was found on the floor. Please check your pockets. Good morning, church. All right. Good morning. That was just a short high. <laughs> All right. Okay, everybody, settle down. Yeah. Okay. I want to honor, thank you, Pastor Clarence. Thank you, Pastor Debbie. Thank you, Pastor Zishan, for having me. Thank you, Pastor Fiona, for having me. Can we all clap for our senior pastors? Come on, come on, let's clap. Thank you, thank you so much. I'm gonna give two phones today. Who's ready to receive a gift today? Anybody wants phone? No, nobody wants, nobody. Okay, I'm here to give two phones. One is mine, all right. Anybody wants an iPhone? iPhone, anyone, anyone? Listen up, listen up, anyone? Hey, anyone wants an iPhone? Raise up your hand, raise up your hand. Nobody, oh, there are they, three, three, four hands. All right, come, come, come. I will give it to her. Her name is, what is your name? Neda. 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 She, she's getting an iPhone. Come on, let's clap, clap, clap. Come on. One and a, and a, there's another phone. It's a very good brand. Yeah. Anybody wants Oppo? Yeah, yeah, there is, okay. What's your name? Serene. 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 Clap for Serene. Come on, she's getting a new phone. Oh, this is mine. I'm, I'm not getting, giving this one. You know why? 
why am i cheerful while giving their phones because they were their phones already <laughs> you know this is how worship is giving back what already is giving the breath back that is already his hallelujah so i don't know how much are you blessed but i will see it by how you worship amen god has been good to me all my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so so He has been good to us. Can we all shout? Yeah. Is he good? I want a response back. Yes. Is he good? Okay, we can do a better job. We can be loud because you know heaven it will be a loud place. You know, Revelation says they all are shouting with oh, it's a better word. Crying out. Hallelujah. Can we all do? Hallelujah. If you want to stand, you can. In the midst of the darkest night, let your love be the shining light, breaking chains that were holding me. Send your sun down and set me free. Everything of this world will fade. I'm pressing on till I see your face. I believe that your will be done. I won't stop till your kingdom come Hey! You are, you are, you are my freedom We lift you higher, lift you higher Your love, your love, your love never ending Oh, oh, oh You are alive in us Nothing can take your place You are all we need Your love has said Remember to don't forget to smile when you're singing because you know giving cheerfully what belongs to him because I was lost with a broken heart you put me up now I'm set apart from the ash I'm born again free in an ending grace for you are you are you are my freedom we lift you higher Lift you higher, your love, your love, your love, never ending. Oh, oh, oh. You are alive in us. Nothing can take your place. You are all we need. Your love has set us free. Oh, oh. I feel alive. I come alive. I am alive. I'm God's straight dance floor. God of Jacob, great I am, King of angels, Son of man, voice of many waters, song of heaven's throne, louder than the thunder, make your glory. Judah, 
let the lion go Hail the lion of Judah Let the lion go Hail the lion of Judah Let the lion go Hail the lion of Judah Let the lion go of Zion, prophets spoke, our Messiah, flesh and bone, you alone are worthy to open up the scroll, like a lamb you suffered, but the lion has arrived. Prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way, prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way, prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way, prepare the way of the Oh Valley, be raised up, oh mountains, be made low, oh Valley, be raised up.
somebody asked this great evangelist why do you shout when you get the mic he said i'm here to witness not a cat that i will to you meow meow i'm here to witness a lion that's why i roar Yeah. 
of you are blessed by Pastor Zubain Ali leading us in a time of worship and of wrath. Thank you so much. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you so much. We are blessed every time he comes and uh, leads in worship. I think next time uh, we'll give you a whole, whole worship set to just lead us throughout the Sunday. Yeah. Please be seated guys. So today we have an international evangelist with us. You know, some of you are wondering, can he finish by 12.30? I see you, Yime. Yeah, but he, 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 he can preach a 10-minute message and people will give their lives to Jesus. Amen. But no, but he's got till 12.30. So ladies and gentlemen, international evangelist all the way from Canada. He's gone to Bahrain, India. Now he's in Malaysia. He's Canadian. Don't hold it against him. He's of Brazilian descent. Ladies and gentlemen, pastor, evangelist, Philip Drummond. Amen. Praise the Lord. Ah, what a joy it is to be in the house of the Lord. It's a place for us to pray, to come together, to celebrate with joy and festivity. Man, the worship. Wow. Praise God. All these worship teams and Pastor Zubin and, and the, the, the team of the house. Uh, we're so grateful for Destiny C3. Uh, so grateful for the leadership of uh, Pastor Clarence and Pastor Debbie. And I'm here invited by my very dear friend, Pastor Zishan um, and uh, Pastor Fiona. And uh, Pastor Ayub, uh, it's been such a joy to spend the last couple of days here in Malaysia uh, serving and breaking bread and spending time together um, with, with the church. And um, also, I want to acknowledge Pastor Zubin, a good friend uh, from Pakistan who just led the worship here, and Pastor Hanuk Hashmat in the Hashmat family, wonderful, wonderful ministry um, in Peshawar, Pakistan. And all of you, thank you so much for the opportunity, Pastor Clarence and, and uh, Destiny C3. Um, as Pastor Clarence said, I, this has been somewhat of a longer trip. I was in the Gulf uh, meeting with different leaders and uh, seeing what God is doing there with the church. And there is excitement. There are new open doors. And you have a young generation um, who were really well trained by their local leaders uh, from different ethnic groups, from India, from the West, uh, from Asia, and so on, and who want to be part of God's mission. And from there, we went to India, uh, where we also spent uh, time with over 50 leaders uh, who are church planters in the north. They're natives of, of India, and wonderful, wonderful time, mostly listening to their stories and encouraging them. And despite some of the challenges, really severe challenges that they are facing in the north, um, you know what's interesting? There was one pastor who uh, really um, faced many hardships, many challenges. But the first time I met him, his smile, his smile, his joy. You see, only the Holy Spirit can do that. Yeah. Only the Holy Spirit can do that. That we have joy, we have peace, we have hope. Not only hope for today, but hope for all of eternity. Yeah. Hallelujah. Only the Holy Spirit can do that. Religion can't do that. Did you know? Yeah. Religion can't do it. 
Religion is such a burden. But Jesus has come to give us a new birth, to write our names in a book of life, transforms us, deliver us, save us. Hallelujah. I want to bring to your attention a subject that is not necessarily an easy subject, but I think it's an important one. And this is to encourage you, to bless you. And this is also an opportunity uh, for us to understand in a deeper way the love of God through our lives. You see, today, when we look at the persecuted church around the world, <coughs> every day, around 365 million Christians suffer persecution daily. You see, an average every day, 13 Christians are killed because of their faith. Wow. Every day. 12 churches, churches or Christian buildings are attacked every day. Twelve Christians are unjustly arrested or detained or imprisoned. And five Christians are kidnapped for ransoms related to their faith. And this is the situation of the church today. In recorded history, actually we have never seen many, as many Christians dying in the world today. But we're going to see that despite pain, tribulations, loss... We see that God's grace is enough for us. And that we are called not to organize ourselves as an opposition to something or some other movement. No, but actually we are called to keep our eyes on Jesus and to love those who persecute us. You see, only a true encounter with Jesus Christ can change your heart, change your mind to that level. Only the Holy Spirit in our lives can change us to this understanding. In North Korea, you see what's going on there. Probably the most severe place for Christians. And you see the same thing around the world. I've been going to last four years to northern Nigeria. And it's one of the places in the world where most Christians lose their lives because of the faith. And listen, church. We cannot... We cannot shut down the voice of the persecuted church. We cannot shut down these facts about what is going on in the persecuted church around the world. We must give the church a voice. Which, by the way, I spend time with the persecuted church in Nigeria. I spend time with the persecuted church in India. I spend time with the persecuted church and had the privilege to spend time with the persecuted church in Pakistan. There are two pastors who you can talk to after the service. They will talk to you in detail what's the situation there. But listen, they are not victims. And they don't want to be treated like victims. And they, want, they don't want the West to embrace their cause in a humanistic way, just feeling sorry for them. No. They want a church like a church in Malaysia, a church in Canada, a church in Brazil that would pray for them, that would encourage them further, that would supply, that, that would uh, uh, bless them, that would advocate, share what's going on. That's what the persecuted church is looking for. They're not there hiding under some tree or some rock feeling sorry for themselves. The important thing on this message that you have to remember is this. This message is not a guilt trip. I'm not here to make you feel guilty for the comfort that you have, the resources that you have in Malaysia. That's not the point. But that you would be encouraged as well. And that the Holy Spirit would move your hearts to get even more involved. Find ways that Destiny C3 is doing missions, investing, training, equipping, commissioning, sending. And get involved. Give. Give generously. Don't give limitedly, but give generously. Get involved. Encourage. Write letters of encouragement. There's so much to say about that. Our text today is in Matthew chapter 5. I'm going to look into a few verses very quickly here. Jesus starts off in this, second, this last part of the Beatitudes. And he says, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now you see, <clears throat> it's almost like Jesus is talking to two crowds. First he says, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. 
which means those who are doing good, doing good in society, whoever they are, whatever they're doing, in whatever layer of society they are, these are people who are doing good, who, are, who have a heart after doing what is righteous. They fear God, but now when we come to the next verse, it's almost like Jesus is talking to the big crowd, but now he turns to the disciples and he says, Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So there is blessedness in persecution. Listen, <laughs> the natural man, the religious mind will not, cannot understand this. Only when you have a true encounter with Christ, that you have been born again, full of the Holy Spirit, and you decide to obey him when he says, go into all of the world and proclaim the gospel and share the good news. This is only when you understand this blessedness that we find in persecution. Now, let me also let something, let, let me also let something else very clear. Matthew 5, 9 says this. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Now, as believers, as followers of Christ, we are not to invoke persecution. No. We're not to provoke persecution. There's nothing romantic about that. There's nothing righteous about that. There's nothing right about that. We are not to provoke persecution. But when we are persecuted that we would not lose heart and that we'll be encouraged. And remember, this is done because of Christ. And you look at the early church. You look at Acts chapter 3. Paul and, Paul and Peter and John, I mean, Peter and John in chapter 3, they see a lame man and he's begging for gold and silver. They say, gold, silver I do not have, but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus, lift up and walk. They knew and experienced the power in the name of Jesus. Right after that, they were, they experienced persecution. And then you look at chapter 4. After they experienced persecution, they were taken before the Sanhedrin. Then they escaped the situation. God gave them an escape. In chapter 4, they come and they meet, they meet with the body of Christ. Probably in a place like this. With people like you. And they started to pray. In the very last part of that prayer, it says, O oh Lord, now look upon their threats and grant us greater boldness to continue to share the good news. It's interesting that when they say look upon their threats, actually they're not really thinking of their own agenda. They're thinking of God. This is made in God's account, in Christ's account. Not only that, they could have easily said, oh God, have mercy on us. Look at, look Jesus, what you left us to, to deal with. Now please send us a cruise ship that would just land by the sea. And you know, God, we can go to Italy, spend about two, three days, two or three years there with some good flat bread pizza, <laughs> right? Some good wine, we can taste some wine, you know. And God, when the dust comes down, then we'll come back to Jerusalem and we'll continue to do your work. Not at all. There was no self-preservation. Do you want to understand what is the greatest challenge for the church in Malaysia? Self-preservation and comfort. Self-preservation and comfort. This will stop you from doing God's work. From expanding his kingdom. This is a time to train, to equip, to mobilize, to inspire, to encourage one another, to lift each other up, to pray for God, for spiritual discernment that we can discern the gifts, the calling of God in the lives of each one. You know, I am a, I'm a result, first of all, my parents, my father who loved the word of God, my mother who prayed. <clears throat> but some people, sometimes young people ask me, Philip, how did you know you're going to be you know, uh, going to pastoral ministry, work, do the work of an evangelist, uh, be working with missionaries in about 30 different countries. How did you know that? Well, I, I, I kind of didn't. <laughs> but actually, it was those Sunday school teachers. When I was four years old, five years old, six years old, seven years old, they prayed. They didn't go just to babysit us. They fasted. They prayed. They 
went through the Bible. They prepared their lessons and they went to teach us. And God gave them spiritual discernment to discern God's calling and gift in our lives. I am a fruit of that. I am a fruit of those Sunday school teachers. I am a fruit of the elders and the workers of the church that while this, while this service is happening, there's a lot of people working in the background. There's people in the doors over there. There's people serving. These people who are serving, who are standing in the doors, who are working in different areas, the pastors, they would come to me and say, you know, Philip, God has a calling in your life. God has a calling in your life. It was these words that kept me encouraged and kept me going and believing that God had a calling in my life. So blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the Son of God. We're not to provoke persecution. I, th I think it's not a sin to say it uh, uh, in here in this cultural context. But I will try to give you a little word that will describe that. It would be stupid. <laughs> it would be very stupid. To provoke persecution. So, but why does persecution matter though? This is an important question and we should face this question as followers of Jesus Christ. What value does it really bring to the church and to the believer? Well, here's one point. It allows us to share in the fellowship with Christ. We can more closely identify ourselves with the master. Persecution takes us, takes us to that place. To actually, we can read the Gospels with different eyes. Now, there is, we, there is sympathy, there is empathy, there is a connection with the text. And the Holy Spirit works on that. Where we're not discouraged. But we are now connecting. We're having a, a closer fellowship with Christ because of persecution. The Apostle Paul, he wrote extensively on this. He said, we don't, we don't preach ourselves, but we preach Christ crucified. He also said <coughs> in Philippians chapter 3, 10, he said that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings becoming like him in his death. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 19, 20, that I may no longer live, but that Christ would live through me. You see, when we have self-preservation and comfort, ah, uh, <laughs> how much is Christ being lifted up in our lives or how much of ourselves are we being lifted up? Second point, persecution tests this and strengthens our faith. Now, let me say something here. I realize that God's transforming work in my life is continual. He's, I'm always learning. The days I spent here with the Punjabi church, with Pastor Zishan, I've learned so much. I keep growing. The Holy Spirit is working in my own life. In the same way, there were times where I stood strong in my own ability. And I thought, oh, I have faith to go through that, Pastor Clarence. No problem. I have faith to serve in this capacity. No problem. Oh, I have faith to go. But then when it happened, I realized I didn't. <laughs> Why? Because, you know, it's, we can project these ideas about faith and commitment and obedience inside our comfort zone. We're inside comfort where I have the domain. But it's only when we step out of our comfort zone, giving a step of faith, walking by faith, not by sight, is a place where now my ears become more sensitive to the voice of the great shepherd. The, the, the early church, they said, now, O Lord, look upon their threats. Grant us, uh, grant us more boldness to continue to communicate the gospel. And then they said that you would stretch your hands and signs and wonders would happen. Out of our comfort zone, we start becoming more sensitive, more aware. Our eyes open, our senses open to the hands of God operating. Out of our comfort zone, we engage in conversations where the Holy Spirit is present. And he is orchestrating the conversation. He is guiding the conversation, guiding our thoughts, guiding our steps, giving us courage and strength. Listen, many times God has, this happens till this day. Don't you look at me like, oh, there's the great man of God, the gifted evangelist. Oh, he is unstoppable, unshakable. He can go through walls. No, there's... <laughs> <coughs> no, I'm just a bag of potatoes. <laughs> but I've been washed by the blood of the Lamb. 
The Holy Spirit dwells in me and I'm just like you. I'm just like you. Till this day, I can be in the airport. I can be inside the airplane. I can be somewhere, anywhere. And I have a, actually a very shy nature. Actually, most evangelists, if you didn't know this, are actually introverts. They're not extroverts. They're not. And if you're in sales and if you studied well, sales, marketing, you know, many of these very successful people in those areas are actually introverts. Nobody's fully introvert, fully extrovert. That's not the point. The point is, don't you look down on yourself. But many times I knew that the Holy Spirit was leading me to say or to do something. And I didn't know how the whole situation would unravel, how the situation would open itself. But as I stepped out of my comfort, I saw God coming through. So much to say about this. So persecution tests and strengthens our faith. It purifies our faith. When you look at the persecuted church around the world today, they're tested by fire. We have so much to learn from them. And they also are hungry to learn from us. Remember, this is not a guilt trip. You have so much to give, to teach. Yes, the persecuted church around the world. So just as gold is refined on fire, our faith is also refined through trials, making us stronger and more resilient. In, John, in James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4, reminds us, Count it all as joy, my brothers and sisters, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, perseverance, and let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. I have gone through deep discouragements in my life. As the psalmist says, at times I have really felt at the bottom of the pit. In that place of, of personal heart, mind, struggle and I want you to know no matter what is your struggle this morning what weight you brought into this place this morning maybe some fear maybe some insecurity sometimes it's taboo to talk about mental health but it shouldn't be sometimes we carry anxieties we feel lonely men these days walk lonely and we can't walk alone and I'm learning to do that myself but what I want to say is this, today you have hope. Lay down your burdens. Trust in Jesus. In these very extreme situations of persecution, Christ is present. He not only called us, he plucked us, he called us out of darkness, out of a place of condemnation, out of a place of guilt, a place of sin, a place of death, giving us new life. But the amazing thing about our God, and you will see this nowhere else, is that He not only calls us to a relationship to walk with Him, but He also will empower you. He will enable you. He will give you grace to walk this life. As a husband, when I am spending time with God, my marriage flows. You see, let me tell you something. Ministry is a busy thing. Oh, ministry is a busy thing. And ministry is a 24-7 affair. You have no idea. I ran a business. I, I started 17 incorporations in Canada. No, I'm not a millionaire or anything like that, but that's just a fact. It was part of my ministry. But I started a business. Today, I give more energy, more effort, more time in ministry than a business. But what I'm trying to say is ministry can become so busy that I am doing so, a lot of good things. I'm still being effective in what I'm doing, but I'm running in an empty tank. And when, when that happens, because it does, hey, let's be honest here. I realize that my communication can become a little bit more edgy with my wife. And then I have to be aware of that, repent, let her know, and come back to that place where I dwell in the presence of God more intentionally. So the point is that we need to spend this precious time with God. That's where we find the strength to go on. The third point of 
why persecution matters. It provides us an opportunity to demonstrate a Christ-like character. And this is important. How we respond to persecution speaks volumes about our faith and reflects the character of our Savior. And here's a tricky part. Religion does not transform an individual's life. Some people, they are Christians full of religion, but have never had a real encounter with Christ. And we should love them, serve them, be gentle with them. But the point I'm trying to make is that this is only possible if we have really experienced new birth. And character is important. In Romans chapter 1 verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jews first and also to the Greek. The second point, uh, the second point here, uh, I'm sorry, I got a, uh, yes, I'm sorry, 1 Peter, 1 Peter 2, uh, 23. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. Look at how Christ, God, rejected to be like God when he was here in this earth. And submitted himself to the will of the Father. In John chapter, uh, in John, throughout the gospel of John, we see at least eight times Jesus saying, I did not come to do my will, but I have come to do the will of the Father who sent me. He goes even further. He says, I didn't come here to seek my own glory, but it is the Father who is in heaven who will glorify me. Dear church, that God would stir your hearts to come back to these fundamentals of the faith. That your faith would be strong. That would really understand what does it mean to really seek first the kingdom of God and trust in Him with our future, with our retirement plans, with the lives of our children, and that we, we would be available to be used by Him. Amen? Amen? So, how should we respond then to persecution? First, we must share the urgency of the gospel. The message of salvation is too important for us to keep it for ourselves, keep it inside our comfort. Even in the face of opposition, we cannot find a place of comfort, but a place where we dwell and we go, where our faith takes action in the grace of God. I remember in, I was in Singapore and the my, the church that invited me to be there, they had a big poster in my room. <coughs> and that poster annoyed me so much. <laughs> because the poster said this. It was a quote uh, from a Catholic uh, priest called Francis of Assisi. And the quote was this. Preach the gospel and when necessary, use words. Have you heard that before? Yeah. Well, there's a few things about that. Number one, he never said it. He never said this. There's enough scholars, enough articles written about this. Number two, as much as it might fit very well with culture, it's actually not necessarily a biblical principle. We need wisdom, of course. Let's be wise. You see, when I come to Malaysia, I'm an outsider. I can only work here under the authority of the church. I do not address some cultural things. I do not speak about many things. It requires discipline. So I have to have a very humble posture when I'm here in Malaysia. A very humble posture when I'm in Pakistan. A very humble posture when I'm in Ni Nigeria. Because you see, otherwise I will leave many problems for Pastor Clarence and Pastor Zisha to take care of. <laughs> and I'll never come back to Malaysia again. <laughs> so... We have to be careful with some of these ideas. So for, here it is. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jews first and also to the Greek. Number two, we must stand united as the body of Christ. 
Do you want to see a spiritual breakthrough in Malaysia? Do you want to see people having real encounters with Christ? Two elements, very important, very important. Number one, unity. Look at the church in, the, in Acts. One mind, one heart. Unity. Destiny C3, you are a united church. You work together with one another. Find ways to work with other groups of the body of Christ. Number two, prayer. When you have unity and prayer, you can expect a spiritual breakthrough. So understand this ministry of reconciliation, that you are ambassadors of Christ, that we are peacemakers. We're not provocateurs. We're not critics of other people's ministry. No, we work for the unity of the body of Christ with the fear of the Lord, desiring and with a conscience and awareness, desiring that he would be glorified. Not that I'm going to promote the great evangelist from Canada, evangelist Philip Drummond, or Last Harvest Evangelistic Association, Association, the great ministry from Canada. These things are here today. They're going to be gone tomorrow. But we need to come together in the name of Jesus. In times of persecution, we need each other, others' support, encouragement, and prayer. Not walking alone. Dear sister, don't walk alone. My dear brother, my young brother, my older, wise brother, don't walk alone. Don't allow your pride to isolate you. Make yourself available to serve. That's one place that you're never going to be alone if you're available to serve. You're going to be wa working with the body of Christ. Don't walk alone. We can't walk alone. And one of the reasons is, it's also a healthy environment, a safe environment where there's accountability. Where we pray for one another, encourage one another. I could not be here today if not being sent by a team. If not, my wife didn't support and send me to be here as well. I can't walk alone. I know that for sure. 2 Corinthians 12, 26 reminds us. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Work together. More and more our cultures that were strong in family, strong in respecting the elders, strong in receiving wisdom from the elders. Today we're spending so little time to no time at all in the dinner table. So little time with one another. We become so divided. Individualism has come in in such an aggressive way. Thirdly, we must diligently pray for both the persecuted and for the persecutors. Following the example that Jesus, our Lord and Savior, left for us. He prayed for his enemies, even as he was hung on the cross. He prayed for his enemies. Matthew 5.44 says, but I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And let us not forget the most crucial aspect of enduring persecution. And this will wrap up this message. And I want to pray for you. The enabling grace of God. Church, we're living in a time where words like grace, anointing, gospel, church a lot of these words are no longer connected with their biblical meaning with their theological meaning or even with their historical meaning we're living in a time in the church in the world that we're having to come back to the fundamentals of the faith we're having to come back at the feet of Jesus once again and humble ourselves and that's the only place where we are not only going to experience but understand the grace of God where we're able to give away, give up living for the world, seeking personal security. But that we can now start living, trusting in God's grace, trusting in his sovereignty. You see, the persecuted church, the way they see God's sovereignty is like this. If I live today, I'm going to share the good news with courage but if I die tomorrow sharing that good news with courage with boldness that is okay 
because to him the glory but the comfortable church they don't see it that way the comfortable church they see the sovereignty of God in the following way I can't get sick but if I do get sick I will rebel I will no longer come to church my church is not good my pastor is not good because many times we're seeking God's hands for blessings and not seeking his face to do his will to follow Jesus as our Lord not just as our Savior so we need his enabling grace and it's in our weakness his grace is made perfect in our weakness when we feel overwhelmed are you overwhelmed today exhausted are you exhausted today and sometimes it's not a physical exhaustion sometimes it's an exhaustion of the heart come to Jesus today when we feel discouraged his grace will sustain you so today desire to understand God in a deeper way in 2nd Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9 reminds us but he said to he said to me my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness in my comfort it's my domain in my comfort I feel strong I have great faith but out of in my comfort zone I have to rely I have to depend I have to, to sur surrender my life to Christ what is the greatest opposition for someone to give their lives to Christ themselves our pride nothing will hold a man more than making a decision to follow Christ than his own pride the gospel say that many of the affluent people that heard Jesus preaching they heard the gospel but because they feared what other people would think of them they decided not to follow Jesus they believed but they feared what other people would think because of their pride they didn't follow Jesus what now people who are in Christ what holds them back from giving more obeying, obeying more being greater worshipers prayer uh, prayer warriors and desiring to play pray a bigger part in God's mission pride pride and you see following Jesus is not a matter of having our names written in the book of life alone which is the greatest thing to celebrate but that he would receive glory through our living, through our walking, how we deal with other people, and so on. The Holy Spirit empowers us to stand firm in the face of adversity and to boldly proclaim the name of Jesus. Acts 44, 31, the Word of God says, And when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the Word of God with boldness. And we can have this confidence. You who are watching this message, you who are here right now, we can have this unshakable confidence in God's provision and protection knowing that He is for us. And nothing can separate us from the love of God. So dear church, dear friends, let us embrace persecution as an opportunity for spiritual growth and for witness. Let us respond with grace, with unity and in prayer, trusting in God's enabling grace to sustain us. As we face these adversaries, we may be reminded of the words of Jesus in John chapter 16 verse 33 in this world you will have trouble but take heart be encouraged I have overcome the world hallelujah let us pray praise the Lord and if any of you who are here I would love to pray for you whatever it is that is stirring in your hearts as I finish this prayer, I will come down here and I'll make myself available to pray for you. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your enabling, empowering grace that sustain us in times of persecution, of trials. Help us, O oh Lord, to stand firm in our faith, 
to be bold witnesses for you and to respond with love and grace to those who oppose you. May the Holy Spirit empower us to overcome and may your name be glorified in everything we do. We pray in Jesus name. later at the front to minister to you if you like prayer please do come to the front we're gonna close with one last song as we slowly edge our way out the door food will be served on the first floor ladies get ready for our awaken event it's gonna be heaps of fun it's gonna be a powerful intentional time that god's gonna meet with us amen let's sing our last song come on shell and grace take it away hallelujah let's, let's stand, stand to our feet church Sing a little louder And if anyone of you want prayer, uh, Pastor Philip will be right here in the front towards my left. Please come see him there. Yeah. Towards the door, Pastor Philip. Yeah.